In the first three episodes, we looked at the composition of natural waters, the buffering processes in natural waters, and the concept of acid neutralizing capacity, which is a way to express the buffering properties of natural waters. In this episode, I'm going to pull all these expressions together and develop a more comprehensive mathematical model that allows us to calculate the A and C from the pH and the pH from the A and C, and to investigate, interpret, and understand the chemistry of natural waters. The first thing we're going to do is to look at the expressions for A and C and the expressions for the concentration of buffering ions. And as you may recall, one of the definitions of A and C was the difference between the cations to strong bases and the anions to the strong acids. And as we can see directly, if we add a strong base such as sodium hydroxide to a water, the sodium concentration will increase, but that will be the only change, which means that the A and C will increase. Correspondingly, if we add HCl, the only thing that's going to change in the expression is the chloride concentration, so the A and C will drop. The other expression is the difference between the anions to the weak acid and the cations to the weak bases. So if we, for example, add a weak organic acid, RH, it will protolyze to R- and H+. And as we see, that will give both a positive and a negative contribution to the A and C. So the A and C will remain the same, while the H+, will increase, thus the pH will drop. We can substitute expressions for all the various anions and cations into this expression. of the anions through the weak organic acids, hydroxyl ion, and finally the aluminum 3 plus ion. And as we can see, all these ions can be calculated from constants, the parameters PCO2 and DOC, as well as the hydrogen concentration. Now we can substitute all these expressions into the expression for A and C. And this is what we get, with the terms representing the different ions as before. With this expression, we can directly calculate the A and C from H+, plus, simply by inserting relevant values into the equation. However, if we want to solve for the H plus concentration, we need to approach it in this way. Solving 0 equals the difference between the anions to the weak acid minus the cations to the weak basis minus the A and C. And this can be done numerically in different ways. Now, this may look a bit messy. But in principle, it's a polynomial equation with a series of constants, the H plus concentration and the A and C. That should equal zero. In the atmosphere, the pressure of CO2 is 4 times 10 to minus 4 atmospheres or 400 ppm. But normally it's higher if we go to streams and lakes. But this is the ambient concentration of CO2. The other constants are temperature dependent and are readily available in the literature. Other constants are the constant for the autoprotolysis of water, for the protolysis of weak organic acids in water associated with DOC, and the constant represent the dissolution of ALOH3 to form Al3 plus with the reaction hydrogen. When the equation has been solved for H+, we can recalculate H+, to pH, and plot it versus the A and C in the solution, as shown in the diagram to the right. The scale ranges from 2 to 10 to the minus 4th to 5 to 10 to the minus 4th. That is, minus 200 to plus 500 micromoles per liter. This specific curve represents the condition in the beach forest, with the DOC value measured at the lab. I have assigned PCO2 to the atmospheric concentration and picked the temperature in the lab where the measurements were made. In the previous episode, we saw that the A and C in this water is about 140 times 10 to the minus 6 moles per liter, and the pH is 6.85. In the diagram, we can pick the value of the A and C and look at the corresponding pH, and we see that it's about 7, which is slightly higher than the measured pH, but still the value predicted by the model is very close to the measured value.
if we should do the similar exercise for the stream at Dolby Söder School, we first have to go to Excel to calculate the ALC. And here I have brought up the data provided from the lab. Where one set of data represent the measurements taken from the water at Dolby Söder School. I have also prepared a table to calculate the ANC. And here I have the cations to the strong bases and the anions to the strong acids. And to get the contribution from potassium, I take the concentration, I divide by the molar weight, I multiply by the charge, and I multiply by 1000 in this case in order to get it in micromoles per liter. And I make the same calculation for all of the ions, I add them up, and I make a similar one for the anions to the strong acids. Repeat. I repeat the calculation, add them up, and I can calculate the A and C as the difference between the cations and the anions. And it is 2,357. So here I have made a corresponding diagram, but over a wider range of A and C. And I have made the calculation for DOC of 41.3 milligrams per liter and ambient carbon dioxide pressure. So the ANC was about 2350, the pH was 8.15, and this is what the diagram gives us. It predicts a pH of about 8.40. As we could see, there was a mismatch between the model pH and the measured pH, with the model over predicting the pH in both cases. I could see three main reasons why such differences or errors occur. One is that there could be errors in the data from the lab with the cations to the strong bases and the anions to the strong acids. The second reason could be that there are errors in the parameter estimation, such as the CO2 pressure. And the third possible explanation is that the model is incomplete, that it lacks important buffering processes, or that the buffering processes included are modeled in the wrong way. Now I will explore the influence of two important parameters on the model calculations, and that is the PCO2 pressure and the DOC, and thus also the concentration of organic acids that are associated with the DOC. In order to illustrate how the carbon dioxide pressure changes the pH in relation to the ANC, I have made calculations for two different pressures, ambient concentration and the double value. And what we see is that we get two different curves. A higher CO2 pressure means that we get a lower pH for the same ANC value. And this is what we had before with the ambient CO2, but if we insert a slightly higher CO2 value, we see that predicted pH is about 8.15, which is very close to the measured value. Correspondingly, the weak organic acids associated with the DOC have very large impact. In the stream in the beech forest, the DOC was 9.4, and this is the corresponding curve. However, if the DOC would have been at the level of the stream at Dolby Söder School, we would have inserted a much higher DOC. In the first case, the model predicted a pH of about 7. However, if the DOC value would have been four times as high, which is not unrealistic, we would have had pH of about 4.5 plus. This means that a low pH could be created not just by a low ANC, but also by high DOC values or a high PCO2 value. In this episode, we have used a comprehensive water chemistry model that links the ANC to the pH and allows us to create elegant diagrams that are useful in predicting the buffering capacity of natural waters. We have seen how important it is to have the right pCO2 values in the calculations. We have seen the profound influence of the weak natural organic acids associated with DOC to the pH value. But maybe the most important take-home messages are that strong acids and strong bases change the A and C and the pH value, while the weak 
acids and the weak bases change the pH value, but they don't change the ANC.